Gozu is a Wagyu beef tasting menu. So we work through the entire animal throughout the progression of a meal. This is part of the Teishoku tray, which is the final Wagyu course. I don't know anybody that is working with Wagyu on this level in the US. This is a nearly everyday occurrence here. Teishoku traditionally is a lunch tray that has a broth, it has a sashimi, it has a seasonal vegetable, it's got pickles, and then either a nice piece of fish or beef or something like that. I spent seven years working as the business development chef for Alexander Steakhouse. We opened a restaurant in San Francisco in 2010, Pasadena, we opened it in Taipei, we opened it in Tokyo, and I really got a chance to travel to Japan and talk to a lot of these farmers. And one of these farmers asked me, hey, it's great that you're taking, you know, all the ribeyes and the strips and the fillets, the tenderloins, but when are you gonna take a whole animal? How about you be the first to import a whole animal from Japan to the United States? Uh, and that was always really intriguing to me. These animals give their life for you know us to enjoy, and uh, there's a, definitely a certain level of respect that comes out of it. So every time that we're breaking down and cutting, and we're always thinking about how best to utilize and showcase each individual piece of the animal. But yeah, I mean, anytime you get it in, you, you realize that you've got a $3,000 piece of meat that you're cutting. So we do a lot of aging here, whether it's with fish or beef. Dry aging has really become quite a phenomenon. You won't generally see these cuts of Wagyu in the United States. You almost have to build a place to serve it. I think that's why a lot of restaurants are sticking with the, the New York and ribeye and tenderloins. In this cabinet right now is a shoulder clawed from Chateau Oene, good friends of ours in Hokkaido. So it's called Hokkaido snow beef. So there's five grades of beef. Among that, you get into beef marbling score, which goes from one to 12. These all grade between 10 and 12 to qualify as snow beef. So here we have the clawed heart. So this is the main muscle that we use in the shoulder for the skewers. And so from here, since it's all nice and cleaned up, we will break it into smaller blocks and then use it to make these skewers. This is the part of the tray where everybody gets kind of I think what they were expecting. I think everybody at some point that comes through this front door expects to have a piece of meat that's grilled over charcoal put in front of them. Everything in this restaurant is cooked over this hearth. Uh, we don't have any gas in the restaurant at all, so we're 90% fire. Here we have the sliced tricep muscle from the shoulder. So what we're gonna do with this is we're going to lay it out and then kiss it with charcoal and finish it with a little mauled on sea salt. And that is one of the elements of the Teishoku tray. This muscle is normally very chewy, so we slice it super thin, as you can see, so it's very delicate. So you don't feel any of that texture on your mouth. All you feel is like the beef and then the fat as you're eating it. Um, and then just like a nice, like it kind of melts away because of how thin we slice it. So we take it and we brush it with a little bit of Wagyu tallow. We use Kishu bean chotan for this. These are actually made from fallen branches that are then put in a kiln, brought up to a thousand degrees. That yields this really cool charcoal and you can almost hear it sounds like ceramics. It's a light cook and then you get a really, really cool barbecue flavor that happens when you do it. This restaurant wouldn't be what it is without fire and charcoal. I think it's kind of the lifeblood of this entire space. When you see there's a counter, everybody sits around. It's kind of transformative for people that come in and, it, and it's very innate to sit around a fire and stare at it and enjoy each other's company. I think it takes it to a whole nother level when, when you're preparing food over that same fire that is kind of providing entertainment and light and warmth. This is the rare seared tricep muscle from earlier that we have kissed with charcoal. And I'm just giving it the garnishes of miso pickled rambo. Then we also have pickled black trumpet mushrooms and kino may leaves. Fish delivery just came in today. Uh, this is all coming from the Toyosu market. Rel cuts 99% of the fish here. So these fish, a type of Sea bream, in Japanese they're called Thai. We use this on a sashimi course on the menu. So these come in already eviscerated. The tails are cut and the fish are bled. And you can see how fresh this fish is just from the eyes. The eyes are super clear and round. Exactly what we're looking for. Yeah, this is one of few things that doesn't get cooked over the fire. I love the way that we are using the entire fish for the, for the dish, because the whole concept of the restaurant is to use the offcuts of the Wagyu too, but utilize the whole cow. So we're doing the same for seafood as well and it's not just Wagyu that we're following that philosophy. Surprisingly the, the dish is really delicate 
and clean because the rest of the menu could be uh, really flavorful and intense. This dish keeps the entire menu really balanced. Dashi is a Japanese-based stock that is made from kombu and bonito. And that's like the basic uh, foundation of dashi. Getting coals hot, hot enough so we can grill the fish for the dashi gelée that's on the sashimi. We want to get a roasty flavor on the fish to create another layer of flavor that can be infused into the dashi. Although the sashimi course is a cold dish, but it also has a touch of the fire in the dish. I'm gonna roast both the heads like this and we're gonna hang the bones of the fish over the fire. So I think a lot of this is just applying different techniques. So we can, we'll, we'll put a hard grill on some of it. If we hang this over the fire, it's pulling a lot more smoke. So it's gonna give a whole different perspective to things. So as we build flavors, we're trying to go across that full spectrum of lightly smoked to full on hard sear to even like char in certain places. So you can kind of tell the bone's been kind of like dehydrated, so the flavor intensifies. And if you smell it, you can smell that smoky flavor from the flames. So when the water's simmering, you just put the bones in with some kombu. And then you want to bring it to a simmer. And after that, we'll bring it down to 75 degrees and let it sit and infuse for an hour. Then we'll turn it into a jelly. The sashimi is coming from Japan. So we'll fillet that, slice that, slice the wagyu, the lardo thinly, that gets layered in between. The fish itself is brushed with a little bit of shoyu that's been in cherry oak barrels. Uh, that gelée, that sits on top, and then that gets finished with onion sprouts on top of that and some cherry blossom. Uni is part of a supplement course that we're running right now that's toast. This uni is coming from Hokkaido as well. So you've got super cold water for this particular dish. This is really, really where it's at. We always kind of open it up, take a little taste, make sure everything is, is where it's supposed to be. Something that we've realized relatively recently is there's an additive that is used in it in order to make it last longer and to keep the flesh more firm. And as we've kind of gone through you start to realize you can taste that. And a lot of people that don't like uni say it makes their throat itch, and that's from that additive. So anytime we can, we'll go with the additive free. That's delicious. Super nice. So this is one of the last things that we got to put together for service today. This is a brisket from Chateau Une. I smoked this for about 11 hours and then it gets sliced thinly and it's being used on a toast supplement with uni and a little bit of Thousand Island dressing. So for this one, we'll block it into uh, Saku. The brisket's another really, really nicely marbled piece, but it does take some cooking. It's still got a little bit of uh, chew to it. This is definitely uh, shows my Indiana roots where it's a lightly grilled piece of toast. And then we've got the brisket that goes over top. We've got a little thousand island dressing that's infused with wasabi. And then we've got some Hokkaido uni that goes on top of that. So this is a bone-in ribeye. The big significance on this, it's been about a year since the USDA started allowing bones to come into the US from Japan. There's very few farms that'll do it because we're talking roughly a $4,700 piece of meat. If this cryovac seal is broken at any time when it comes in through USDA, the product won't be allowed in. So it's a risk for both the farms and the packers in Japan. This has been dry aged for about 50 days. So we're gonna trim this down a little bit. You can see it's got a little bit of bark on it from the age, particularly on this side. We like to just skim a little bit of that off just to open it up. It's not a whole lot. So you can kind of see as we get through this top layer, things start to open up a little bit. There's always a wow factor when you bring this out and let them know what's coming. I'm just gonna season with a little bit of salt and pepper and start grilling. It's great to do like this large format stuff for big groups. It's kind of a, an impressive chunk of meat. So it definitely, it makes, you know, it makes a statement for sure. So we start getting, you can kind of see this like really, really nice crust uh, right out of the gate. We don't want it to just blow up in flames. So it's going to be bitter and kind of this kerosene flavor. So there's a lot of back and forth and just managing these coals. It's fun to cook a little bit during service. We'll go up, hang here, just let it cook slowly for the rest of the way. Let this thing do its thing and then pull it down and slice it. 
utilizing whole animals and offcuts. I think Wagyu is almost a gateway animal from that standpoint. There's a lot of parts of the cow that you can eat and a lot of different preparations that can be done with Wagyu versus say an American breed. I think we grind nearly 60% of the animal in the United States with Angus beef. Whereas there's a lot more focus, particularly in Japan, on the different cuts and the different textures that come from things. There's a different palette set that's being used. I think cooking on fire it requires an immense amount of skill out of the chefs and the cooks that do it. There's a ton of heat management. Not all wood burns the same. So there's always some variance. The center of the restaurant is the hearth. That fire is kind of the soul of the restaurant. It's got kind of a heartbeat. I think the way that meat interacts with charcoal and with wood is a very, very special thing. Most of this animal you can just grill over fire and it's delicious, but there's some things that take a little bit more time and energy. And I think we're, that's kind of what this restaurant's all about is finding those, those ways to work with the versatility and to, to find nuance and in the individual muscles on each primal that we bring in.